Hello everyone, my name is Gabby, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review. This time, reviewing episode 54. The time machine is almost ready, and everyone is preparing to fight. Goku, Beerus, and Whis return to tell everyone about Zamasu, saying that while he may be dangerous in the future, there's no proof right now that he and Black are in fact the same person. Hearing about Goku's feats, Trunks is starting to have doubts as to whether Goku and Vegeta even need his help to fight Black. And when Vegeta shows him Super Saiyan Blue, those doubts are made even more obvious. But Vegeta tells him that he shouldn't want to be strong just so he could beat Black. He should want to get stronger so he can deal with whatever might happen in his future. Trunks agrees, thanking his father and proclaiming that he'll surpass both him and Black. And back on their planet, Beerus and Whis get contacted by Zeno. He wants to meet with Son Goku. So, what did I like about this episode? Well, first of all, there was some nice kind of fun little fan servicey things that I kind of really enjoyed, like Trunks using image training, something we haven't seen for a very long time, and then also like some mentions to sort of Super Vegeta, and then like Grade Grade Two, Grade Three, or Ascended Ultra, whatever you want to call them, those big bulky forms that they showed off in the Cell Saga. And what I really liked about the kind of the callbacks in this episode is they weren't just like random references, or just like, hey guys. Do you remember that one thing? They include it and then they also sort of use that as sort of jumping off points for other parts of the story. So like the image training thing basically leads into this fun little gag with my like image training about having trunks like kiss her. And then the stuff with like grade three trunks. Trunks uses the, that big up bulking out form just as a way to make Vegeta let his guard down and make him think that trunks doesn't know what he's doing so trunks can get some good hits in on him. So I thought that was a, lo a lot more clever than I thought it was going to be when you're just gonna like randomly put in old elements of the series in there. Also, the scene with Samasu and Goasu seeing a bunch of new sort of mortals being born on a planet and then using the time rings to go into the future and see if they're going to like get over their destructive tendencies, which spoiler alert, they don't. I thought this scene was honestly really important because it basically, it gave us a lot more confirmation of what Samasu's motivations were. And they're like, Zamasu now he's sort of wondering that he feels like they should kind of just sort of destroy like mortal kind because they're just naturally destructive and stuff and they're like not perfect beings at all. And the thing is we never really got proper confirmation that that's how the world works in Dragon Ball. Considering Dragon Ball we only really, like we've only really seen like two two like species pretty much like Earth and Namek. Nowadays we've only seen like Earth and Namek and they're not that bad. So you almost wonder like whether Zamasu's fears were actually like true or not. You almost wonder if like he's just kind of making a big deal out of nothing. But in this scene you realize no. So like all over throughout the throughout the world this is how Dragon Ball works. There are species that are made and they go and they destroy each other and then they come back and they destroy each other again. That is how it works. Zamasu isn't just making this stuff up because we need a motivation. Also in that scene Gowasu actually explains why there are multiple time rings and it turns out I think the green time rings or something that the other time rings are created when an alternate universe or alternate timeline is created by people trying to mess with time and going back in time. This might not sound like a big deal but I think it's very actually very important and I think this is a really good thing because it shows that they do know the trunk the time travel in Dragon Ball normally operates by multiverse theory in that you can't actually change the past, but just you just create another timeline. You know, people were wondering that maybe like Toei and like Toriyama and everyone had forgotten that's how time travel worked. They're gonna like contradict themselves by making it so that you actually can change the past. But in this case, it's saying no. We know that characters make new timelines when they go back in time. So it's it's nice to know that they haven't forgotten that important plot element, and that means that's probably whatever this whole situation with Black and Zamasu is means it might actually be well thought out. That's what I didn't like about this episode. Really, it was mostly just like, not really anything like bad about the episode, but just right kind of like disappointments in my opinion about the episode. And that was like, first of all, the stuff with Trunks, sort of like his sort of character arc of this episode was him just sort of looking and also witnessing some of the amazing things that Goku and Vegeta have done firsthand and sort of being like, Goku and Vegeta are so much stronger than me right now. What's the point of me even being there? They could probably beat Black without my help. Like why, so why am I even here in the first place? When I heard about this, I thought this was, su this was such an interesting idea to dwell upon because you know, this idea that like the main characters are so much stronger 
than like anyone else. So sometimes you always wonder like every other character can kind of feel like they're sort of useless in comparison. That is such an interesting idea because it's something that kind of pervades the entire series. Practically every member of the supporting cast who isn't Goku have got a gotten point where they're realizing like Goku is so much stronger than me. I am basically useless. In the series, that kind of idea is just sort of an accidental byproduct of the constantly increasing power scale. But, you know, I always wondered what that would feel like for a character. Having, spending your entire life like working towards something and then having someone like Goku who can just do the exact same things and better, faster, and just more efficiently. It would make you feel useless. It would make you feel like your entire worth as a person is kind of useless because there is someone who's just so much better than you. I really wanted this episode to kind of maybe go a bit more in depth into that idea. That idea that Trunks is almost going to like a sort of spiral of like sort of self-doubt and like loathing because he's like, I'm useless. What, what could I possibly do? But it wasn't really explored in much detail at all. In fact, it was only really just touched upon on a like very surface level. The way he just kind of gets over it, it's basically just Vegeta just goes and says, Listen, Trunks, um, I know that's what you say, but it doesn't matter. You should just try and get stronger anyway because you're my son and you're a Saiyan and Saiyan pride and all that. And then Trunks is like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's fine. I'm over it now. I I'm over it now. All, all it took was just that one thing from you. That one thing that you said, now I'm over it. I just felt like this was a bit of a wasted opportunity because it could have been, you know, it could have really gone in depth into like the sort of psychological implications of being like a human or being a member of the supporting cast and like feeling like you're worthless. And it's an idea that even if it's not necessarily realistic, I feel like it's an idea that audiences could really relate to, but they really didn't touch upon it in a lot of detail. And I'm a little disappointed about that. I don't know, I just felt like the whole like the whole way the Trunks kind of got over these issues just felt a little generic and not particularly emotional. I, I feel like they could have gotten into a lot more detail into like Trunks' mindset and into what actually caused that change in his mindset. I feel like that would have made this episode like really, really good because it would have done something that Dragon Ball has never done before. And speaking of that, I feel like that could have also helped improve like the Zamasu and Gowasu scene with the whole like time ring and like looking at the mortal kinds and stuff. The scene was perfectly fine. It was serviceable. It, it fulfilled its point. It kind of, it, it gave you a reason to understand why Zamasu is the way he is. But at the same time, it felt a little generic and there wasn't really much of an emotional connection there. If this episode and this scene is going to be like the only leftover stuff that we're ever going to see that explains Zamasu's motivations, I'm gonna feel like, well, I, I understand Zamasu's reasoning. I can't understand why it would make him a villain if he is going to become a villain. It just feels like Zamasu didn't have like a big emotional investment in this kind of stuff. It feels like he's just sort of casually observing it. And you know, I don't understand how you could want to go and destroy everything just from casual observation. Like, I would have thought it'd been better if, you know, maybe Zamasu ended up having like a, a close relationship with one of these species that did end up getting wiped out and to the point that he's actually actually kind of horrified and scared and like it doesn't he just can't accept the fact that those species were wiped out and that sort of leads him on the path to saying that maybe these human beings and these mortal kinds should just be destroyed in the first place but after all I know that could actually happen later on I mean the story isn't over yet maybe Zamasu has some kind of like more tragic backstory that we haven't found out about I hope that is the case because I feel like that would make him more interesting and a bit more sympathetic. I know villains don't have to be sympathetic, but I feel like that would actually help. So as for next episode, Zeno, the king of all, the Omni King, has shown up, hijacking the plot, hijacking everything, and basically saying, hey guys, I want to meet Son Goku, so the story is about me now. Does Zeno have anything to do with the threat around Black? Does Zeno have anything to do with anything that's going to happen later on in the future? At this point, we have no real evidence. It, it, it kind of feels like the subplot is coming a bit out of nowhere, but I feel like it's still going to be related to the Black stuff somehow, but I don't know how it's going to be related to it. So, you know, I'm very interested in seeing what Zeno wants and what this has to do with Goku Black and the time machine and Trunks and all that kind of stuff. So that was Dragon Ball Super episode 54. Honestly, it was actually a really good episode. Like it, it introduced some good points and it, it looked pretty good and everything it was trying to do, I think it communicated pretty well. 
The problem was I wasn't expecting good, I was expecting great. I had the same situation now as I'm having in when I was watching Dragon Ball Super episode 37, that was the Vegeta Kava fight. Everything that the episode did was good, it was completely serviceable. Unfortunately, I think my imagination went a bit in, into overdrive and I was expecting a lot more than what was actually going to end up in the episode. It's still a good episode, I was disappointed, but the disappointment is pretty much all my fault for overthinking things and expecting more from this series than what we're actually ending up getting. You know, I shouldn't really expect subtlety from Dragon Ball, but either way, it was still a good episode and don't make my personal disappointments like convince you otherwise. Anyway, Dragon Ball Super is going on another week's break and it's, I think it's, the, it's this for the Olympics. So anyway, this is Gabby signing out and I guess I'll see you in two weeks for another episode of Super. So bye guys.